Hello, friends. Thank you for joining me today. This is the Tell It Like It Is podcast. And I have a very special guest today. Hi, guys. Is that me? Am I going to introduce myself? or? Yes, introduce yourself for us. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Kinshasa Msola, and I'm joining you here from ATL, shout it. Um, I am the owner of Kinjoy, it's K-I-N-J-O-Y, which is an events uh, management company focused on promoting Black joy. All right. Thank you so much. Um, I'm still working on the name, King Kinyasha. <laughs> so kin, like we are, you are my kin. Right. Sha and sa. Kinshasa. Mm -hmm. Kinshasa. I'm good with names, so I'll get it. <laughs> it's okay. It takes a minute. I've had it for uh, uh, 21 years now. <laughs> Just kidding. I had it for all my life, so it's all right. <laughs> um, yeah, so thank you for coming on. I had some technical difficulties today. Um, and thank you for your patience. Um, so I made my first trip to Atlanta a couple weeks ago. And um, I, you know, when I was on the plane, I was like, I have to look on meetups. And if you paid attention to the progression of the story, like meetups has been such an important tool, I think, and it can be used even more for community building. Uh -huh. And um, I looked on there, I saw your event, and I just showed up. I know. Like you registered that day. <laughs> so a little background. I have a meetup group called Let's Celebrate Black Joy. Um, and that's exactly what it is, a celebration of joy. It's linked uh, to the business, but it doesn't have to be. Um, I want it to focus on events in Atlanta uh, that are different, that are unique. Um, and that focus on our, our people or, you know, any of color, you know, Latino, um, you know, um, either Hispanic or black, you know, people of color. Um, here in Atlanta, I love it. I've been here for whew, about 23 years. Jeez Louise, yeah. So I, <laughs> I came down here for college, basically it never left. Um, and a lot of Atlanta has changed uh, since I've been here, um, still love it. Uh, but there's this, um, kind of uh, a weird uh, like pause in the, the entertainment world, you know? Um, in the business world, we are continually progressing. This is like the place to be. Um, but here, um, I feel like it's the same old, same old. You know, you're either going to the club or you're going to the club <laughs> and that's it. And clubs aren't even like they were back in the day. They're, you know, back in the day, I used to go to the club just to dance. Like I didn't even drink, believe it or not. Um, but now it's, you know, you just go to the club to look around and, and see who's there, or try to catch a celebrity. Um, a lot has changed. So I really created that meetup to try to bring something different to a new type of vibe to Atlanta. I always say for the, um, for the lanes, you know, for the people who don't like going to the club and just standing there, for the people who want to actually dance somewhere, for the people who want to learn something new, uh, people who want to conversate, uh, for those who want to find their tribe. And so that's how the meetup was created. And I had an event on a Wednesday and your guy, <laughs> this guy registered like two hours before the event and just popped up, <laughs> which was that's, awesome. That's what it's for. You know, you're, you're doing the work. Um, and so much of what I believe in is community, right? And I think you just, you said it all right there, you know, I think people want more community, you know, and not just black people, I think across the spectrum, right? You right. know, I, uh, there's so much statistics around um, how isolated and lonely people feel. And, you know, it's not social media. I think even before social media, we had that trend, but I think it's just spreading and growing and you know, we have a breakdown in the good old days. Right, and of course COVID didn't help. So now right. we're at a, a, a high, especially when you're talking about like the mental health of our community. It's the people are isolated, people are alone. Um, it's a little bit different here in Atlanta. <laughs> um, I, my, um, 
my little quote is welcome to Atlanta, what COVID? So, so we were closed for about 2.5 hours and then we opened right back up, no comment. Uh, but there is still a lot of uh, people that are going through things because of that isolation. Um, I don't think people understand uh, sometimes being alone, it brings up other things or they might not be in a, a, a healthy household for a lack of better words too. So, um, which is good. Another example of uh, why we do this, why we try to bring even a virtual community. Um, so I even try to use social media too, to bring a little bit of that, uh, that, that community together. Um, because some people don't want to leave the house. Some people are uh, still uh, inside. Some people have the mentality they wanna go out. It's each his own. It's up to, you know, whoever you are, it's up to you, it's your decision at your discretion. Um, but I want to make sure that we are building that, you know, we are building that community. We are building that um, that sense of, of of love, that joy, and we're supporting each other. What was your What was the reaction like before before COVID? In with my company or just here in Atlanta? With your company. Um, well, my company is fairly new, but it's, uh, I would say it's kind of a spinoff of another company. So uh, my ex-husband and I had a uh, game company. And so large games where we rented out like um, uh, cornhole, um, handmade cornhole, jumble Jenga, um, jumble connect for all brilliant, brilliantly, excuse me, handmade um, by my ex-husband. Um, it was wonderful. It was awesome. We would rent these games out and that was a way for us to kind of bring that joy. So we kind of had that same mindset, even though I don't think we knew that. Um, through the 2020, I had a little bit of a down period in my life where I was going through something. Um, and as you can tell, because I keep saying your next husband, <laughs> I am now divorced. Uh, and it, it really caught me off guard uh, because um, I'm a little bit a little bit of a perfectionist. <laughs> I'm a past educator as well. So we like to plan, plan, plan. We're organized. I'm definitely a uh, type B. And so when I thought I failed at something, I, you know, kind of went in. I, I first went outwards and tried to uh, make the relationship better. I uh, taught, did webinars. I, what, uh, you name it. I downloaded apps. I was reading books, everything. And then when we both decided, which was, a, it was a, um, uh, combined decision to get a divorce, I kind of drew inward, like, oh, I failed at something. Right. I'm no good at something. I can't, you know. Um, and I, I, I think going or hitting what I felt was one of my lowest points made me gain toward my skills. So I've always been this uh, optimistic, annoyingly happy person. Uh, if you can tell, it gets old. <laughs> I'm always a cheerleader, cheerleader, and, and, I, and I remain in gratitude at all times. And I think because I got out of my little funk so quickly, um, even, you know, a lot of my, my, my girlfriends were like, you know, are you sure you're okay? You know, you're a little still too happy after getting divorced. You know? Don't grab a gun. <laughs> No, I won't. Um, but I started realizing I actually had another girlfriend that was going through the same thing. And I, and I thought to myself, well, what's the difference between me and her? Why am I, you know, moving or ready to move forward with my life, you know, excited about the next chapter? And why does, uh, does she seem so still, I guess, caught in it? And um, <clears throat> started doing some research on uh, positive psychology, um, started doing some research on resiliency, especially within our community, and really found out that some of those, um, I call them superpowers. I don't know where, but some of those superpowers that the ancestors gave me at birth that I've been trying to hide for so long because I wanted to be cool, you know, you, you know, I, you know, it's lame to be happy in our community. Right. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. You know, dudes don't take pictures and smile, you know, right. we're, we're hardcore, son. Right, right. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, just hiding my happiness, my geekness, I'm a huge geek, you know, hiding it for years uh, to try to fit in uh, with the community. And then after a while, I'm like, no, this is me. You know, this is why people are drawn to me. You know, it is that energy that I get off, give off that, uh, you know, have people come to me. And I'm like, I need to spread that. And so it started just with kind of posts um, on Instagram, you know, just because a lot of times you see posts, but there are a lot of times there are people going through things too. And so I just started doing some happiness posts or happiness videos. 
Um, I've always been an event planner, again, educator, party planner, everything. Right. Um, so I think my first event was with my friends. I just wanted to see them because I hadn't seen them in over a year, of course, uh, going through what I was going through, nor my family. And uh, they came over the house. I did a little flower workshop for them and like blew them away. And they're like, you need to do this. You need to do this all the time. What was the date on that? When was that? I, I did just my girlfriends, um, 20, 2020, like November, December. Um, they, they were the ones cheering me on to say, maybe you should do this uh, for other people. Right. And I did my first, I guess, like live event um, in April of 2021. Uh, so I did a couple of more events, and then I did a live event, and then I did three beta events before I actually decided I wanted to do to do a business. And I did that because you know everyone loves what they do, everyone has a passion for something, but when you turn it into a business, sometimes it's not the same. You know, you can turn that love into a heart. You know, like if I bake pies and I love baking pies, it becomes a business. It's other things. It's the finances. It's the inventory. It's the co- blah blah blah. Um, so I played around with the idea all of 2021. I had very, very successful um, workshops, events. Um, and then finally, I was like, you know, let's, let's just launch and do it. So the true launch date was in April, um, but I'm really still just getting that, that momentum up. Uh, the great thing is I still have the the community from the previous com- uh, company that my husband and I own, the community that I already have with my friends, the very large social community um, from attending Clark Atlanta University, CAU. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> and, which is another type of community, HBCUs, that we really, really stick together. So, you know, obviously what you're talking about is the, you, the good that you're doing in the world that you feel can help address things that need to be addressed. So I I find that most people are very complacent and they're not, you know, they're not like creating businesses, launching ideas and doing, you know, most people I find they, they want to blend in, stay, they don't want to stand out, you know, just go to work, you know, if they have friends, one or two or whatever their friend group is, just stay in that. And, you know, I think for us to move forward, we really have to build. We really have to be active. We have to pull each other up and consolidate our power and really be intentional with that. I love that word. Yes. Um, I feel that you always have to take people at their place as well. So not everybody is the go-getter, you know, and not everybody is the business owner. Because if everybody was a business owner, then who would work in our businesses, right? So you definitely have to meet everyone at uh, at their level. I think what we're doing right now starts that conversation. It starts the relationship. It makes someone feel uh, comfortable. There are people like me or people do have that mindset. Oh, I just had that conversation with my two friends. Maybe I can branch out. Maybe there are others that think like me, that act like me, so on and so forth. Um, and even if they're not, you know, starting or launching something, they're still going to be involved because of the, like I said, this energy or this vibration that we're giving off uh, currently. Um, and that's that's kind of like my main goal for Kinjoy is to be a catalyst of that mind change, you know, um, shifting that mind from being complacent or sitting or accepting. Uh, whatever, whatever a person is going through, you know, the high, the low, the low, you know, whatever it is. And instead kind of shifting that mindset to think a little higher. I'm trying not to get too spiritual on you. <laughs> Listen, let get spiritual because it's, it's all another level of the same conversation and it, it needs to go there because it's a part of the, the dynamic that you have to talk about. Right. Well, I grew up like this, man. My mother has always been putting out that vibe to me. And uh, I, I don't want to tone it down, but I also want to, uh, you know, not be shut off by people who definitely need to hear me. You know, have you ever heard a person, you know, come up to you and, and shove their religion down your throat? 
usually when that happens, you automatically block it off. So Ken Joy is kind of doing that same thing. I'm giving that that little motivation with kind of like spoon feeding it for you. What is it? Spoonful of sugar. So right. that's why you have events that start off with like some mindfulness breathing. Um, I've had people attend my events and when they leave, I, I ask them because you can tell who meditates, who doesn't meditate. You can kind of tell, especially when I start that off. And I'll go to them and I say, was that uncomfortable with you? You know, are you okay? And they're like, well, I've never meditated before, but just that breathing was okay. I don't want to say, well, that is meditation, but you know. <laughs> Uh, and then a couple of days later, you know, I may get an email saying, hey, can you tell me what we did in your class the other day? I want to do that again because it made me feel so calm. So tell us a little bit about the type of events you've done so far. So Ken Joy has two different services. We have Joy Vents and we have Joy Shops. Yes, I like puns. Leave me alone. <laughs> so... <laughs> Joy shops or workshops. Okay. I just changed the joy shop because I don't like the word workshops. I don't want you to work in here. I yeah. want you to experience joy in my workshop. And 90% of those are crafting. So you're going to come in and you're going to learn something new. I've done a flower design, a joy shop, candle making, um, tea tasting, aromatherapy. So they actually make their own room scents. Um, and I'm getting into some more, and I, I want to say this, I don't want to be biased, some more um, classes that the gentlemen will be uh, excited about. I noticed there are a lot of females in my classes, um, but I'm okay with that right now. <laughs> so um, it's more of an experience, you know, it's not just you're going to, you know, create your own fresh flower bouquet in my class, but you're going to have a skill, we're going to network, you're going to meet somebody um that likes the same thing as you do you're gonna breathe you're gonna uh kind of just let the outside go and enjoy just for like two three hours enjoy just being in this calm relaxing atmosphere so those are joy shops then we have joy events which are events what joy tacked on up of course <laughs> and joy events are social gatherings those are what i met you at so uh the meet and greet I have a Wu-Tang trivia, immersive Wu-Tang trivia coming up. Um, I've done scavenger hunts. I did an adult field day in August. That was crazy. <laughs> that was crazy. I loved it. Uh, but joy events are all about being a kid again, uh, bringing back that joy of awe, that when you didn't know everything or you didn't have to know anything, the days where homework was the worst thing, right? And so that's a whole different level of joy that I want to bring out um, of our people. And so all of my joy events are usually going to be something um, that gets you, again, moving around, gets you involved, even uh, at my trivia. It's not just your regular, you know, here's a question, here's the answer. Oh, no. I got an app on here. You're downloading stuff. You're getting up. You're moving around. You've got to be on someone else's team. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. <laughs> so those are the two services uh, for now. And so Ken Joy has kind of two different uh, types is Kinjoy events, and then um, something else is coming, but I'm not going to say 20, 2022 is going to be a wonderful year. Let's just say that. <laughs> what was the field day like? The field day was amazing. Um, it started it, it started off a little weird. I we it was supposed to be outside, of course. I wanted it to be like a field. And if you remember elementary school, right? I was a teacher, and at the end of the year, we have the field day, and that's when all the classes would get together and we would compete with different grade levels. It's exactly like that, but with adults. Now, mind you, we're all like 40 and over. Oh no, I said I'm 21, sorry. We're all like 20. <laughs> and so this is kind of where I marketed. So we had our, you know, we had people as young as, you know, 30s, I had some 20 year olds in there. And then I had some 50s and 60s and they, they, were, they were doing their thing. Um, potato sack racing, tug of war. We had a jump rope competition. Um, we had, oh, what, what else? Oh, uh, two-legged, sorry, three-legged um, race. Um, and we had to cut down a little bit because it rained that day. So we actually had to make it indoors. Uh, but I am gonna do that next year. The same exact thing. I want that to be an annual event. I want that to get larger and larger and larger. But yeah, field day was amazing. I had a ball. I was sore for the next week. <laughs> I'm going to write that in. It's going to be like a little clause. Be prepared to be sore after this event. But it's worth it. It's worth it just to see the, the laughter that came up, just to see. Um, 
I'm saying the Facebook post, but it wasn't even because it was social. It's because I was seeing people post, oh my God, I'm here and this and that and the third. And they were just so excited. Those smiles were just so bright um, to let go, you know, to, to get away, you know, and actually no children were invited, which is like very taboo, but purposely I wanted moms and dads to, to come off adulting. I always say that, stop adulting for a second. Give me just two hours of your time and, uh, and, and have some fun. You know, act like a kid again. <laughs> How are you reaching people for your event? Currently, it's all digital marketing. So I have an Instagram account. I have a Facebook account, Twitter account. We're on LinkedIn. And everything is at KenjoyEvents.com. Um, as well as uh, email marketing, of course. And that that's it for now. Um, again, 2022 right now, I'm really just building uh, my audience. and. I'm okay going slow because I'm very particular about the brand. I want to make sure people understand uh, what Kenjoy uh, wants to be. Um, and it's very easy. And I got introduced, oh, this is a party planner. No, 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 no. I'm not a party planner. I'm a joy enthusiast. <laughs> Two different things. Sounds the same, but it's not. So I really, really want to um, make sure people are understanding what Kenjoy is. Uh, before we get, you know, I think this is the, when, when businesses are small and when they first start out, that's like the most important part. A lot of people try to rush over that, uh, you know, that part to, to get straight to the money. Mm -hmm. So you want to bring people together to celebrate humanity? It's, it's more of bringing people together to start the process of changing their mindset. So yes, celebration is involved. In order to change their mindset based off of um, positive psychology, there's a few things that they have to do. Now I can go ahead and just have a workshop and, and train people on that, but I don't think I would get as many people to come uh, to my positive psychology class. I'm a huge nerd, I would go, <laughs> um, but you know, if you slowly, like every, like at, at the Wu-Tang um, trivia, it's about, you know, there's going to be drinks there, there's going to be parties, but then there's going to be a little tidbits of information that's thrown on you, little tidbits of how to uh, continue the optimism, little tidbits on, uh, you know, you were happy today or this and that. What are you going to do tomorrow to stay happy? What are you going to do so on and so forth? How are you going to break in your, your work day, especially being virtual? Um, and, so you, and you, saw, you saw a need in the community for more positive psychology. Yes. What, what, what specifically did you see a need for? What were you seeing? Our people have gone through so much for years uh, in this country that I feel like we forgot how to be happy. We have to be so strong. We have to be so resilient. We have to be, uh, we have to push to do this. We always have to do things better. Uh, we have to do things more. I am in technology, okay? Um, for the past three jobs, I have been the only black female at my job. And the higher I go in my rank, the less of course I see of me, the less I see females, period. Uh, but of course, the less black females. So, that it, it 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 didn't stem for there, but it 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 did. You know, Kenjoy kind of is is doing several things at the same time, and I I really feel like the more hardship we go through, or or the more we're climbing out of of um, the systemic racism, for instance, mm -hmm. it's it's a it's a good thing. We're we're finally paying attention. We're we're doing things that we need to do, and I I give all like hands to the younger generation too that are starting a lot of these movements. Um, but we can't forget about joy. You know, we can't forget to be happy while going through the process. Um, a lot of times our people are like, okay, I'll, I'll get happy when I get here. You know, I'm climbing that mountain and I'll be, I'll calm down when I finish, get to the top of the mountain. You can't always do that. You have to stop and look around and look down and see how far you've come mm -hmm. or just, you know, Stop on that plateau for a second and take a breath. What does happy, what does this um, positive psychology and happiness look like? Little small moments of paying attention to your happiness. 
changing your mindset on being a little bit more optimistic, uh, even when bad things are going down. Uh, so there's the person, right, who, um, I don't know, gets out of the car and drops their keys. And they go, oh, I dropped my key. Silly me, let me go ahead and get that key. And they bend down to get their keys, right? That's it, open the door, get in their car, they're gone. Then there's the person that drops her keys. God, son of a motherless, go to her, God damn. All the time, I just, I, I can't, I can't win. I just can't win. What is going on with the world, you know, instead of just moving past it. Now, I'm not saying things don't happen to us that are so large that we can't, uh, you know, just quickly go through it. But I'm saying focusing on that positive first, even when you're in the storm, knowing that it's going to end, every storm ends, knowing that it will get better, knowing that, you know, what, what does our grandmother say? This too shall pass, you know, and, and all those other terms that we ignored when we are little. And now as adults, we're like, oh, grandma me was right, <laughs> you know? Um, so that's that, that's that mindset or that mind shift, I like to say, that I'm trying to bring about. And I'm bringing it about by social events and slowly teaching. I'm gonna have workshops as well on, um, on positive psychology, but really having people focus on the positive things that are going on in their lives, no matter when. And it should be an everyday thing, focusing on gratitude, on gratitude. Oh my God, my lights are off. Yeah, but I'm still in the house. My lights was off today, but I, I got a roof over my head, you know? Exactly. Or I just got kicked out of my house. Uh, I'm sleeping in my car. Oh my God, I got a car to sleep in. I know that sounds crazy. And I know people are like, girl, shut up. I went through it too. I don't tell all of my story, but I went through it too. And I swear it was that optimistic attitude that, is, that got me through. Plus the universe pays attention. <laughs> so we had a pre-conversation and you took a lot of notes. So what stands out to you from the pre-conversation? I don't have that in front of me, man. <laughs> but what okay. stood out from our pre-conversation? I don't want, you don't have to, yeah. yeah. I'm about to say, it takes two seconds. You know, my little organized crazy self. Um, you, you asked me the, you know, how did it get started? How, where did the passion come from building community? Um, so I think we kind of cover that a little bit. Um, oh, you asked, you asked me a couple of good questions in our pre-conversation. What was life for me growing up? Um, which was based in community. I had a very large, um, community growing up. My grandmother had uh, 11 children. So I had 11 aunts and uncles. My great grandmother had 22 children. So I had even more. <laughs> tons of cousins, tons of support. I think that that community, that family community that um, my mother uh, instilled with us too helped. I also think um, my mother instilling that African culture in me at a young age. So I was the three-year-old talking about Black Pala, Ngala, or you know, <laughs> explaining to people what my name is. And my name is Kinshasa, it's Kinshasa. No, it's not Kenny, it's an African name. You know, I was so proud of my heritage. You know, I was so proud of who I was, even while you know, getting talked about or getting um, made fun of, you know, because pro-Black, I hate that term, but pro-Black was not cool when we were growing up, you know? They didn't, they didn't get cool until Disney came out with Wakanda, but <laughs> <laughs> leave it to Disney to, to wake our people up. No comment. That's a whole nother stage. I'm not going <laughs> not gonna to get on uh, that part, but um, I, I think instilling that, that, that sense of pride in my culture made me the person who I am today. Um, and I, and I give, all props to my mom because my, my father is actually African, so I am African, but um, he was not a part of me and my big brother's life. Um, it was my mother who stilled in uh, my sense of joy. It was my mother who uh, laughed at me being goofy and silly and accepted it, you know? And I was, I always uh, acted younger than my age. I was always told I need to act my age, act my age. My mother would come in and she's just fine, <laughs> you know? Um, I grew up with my grandmother. 
Um, my grandfather passed uh, when I was four and my mother promised my grandfather that she would uh, take care of grandma. So grandma moved into our household at a young age and that was my dad. So if I got in trouble at school, I would come home. I would get my butt whipped by my grandmother first. <laughs> And then my mom would come home and then whip my butt. <laughs> so also having that that um that wisdom in the household. Of course, my mother was a wise person, but of course my grandmother has been through she was very wise. My grandmother's a person who started me breathing, you know. Um, we would, you know, be outside playing rock wars. It's my brother's idea. <laughs> I get busted the head with a rock or something, and my brother, um, all the screaming is not going to do anything. Calm yourself, close your eyes, take a breath. And it would work. Uh, yes, I was bleeding out of the side of my <laughs> But it, it was definitely my grandmother who uh, taught me how to control my breath, um, as well as uh, my dance instructors. My mother kept me and my brother very, very busy. We grew up in, let's just say, a tough neighborhood. Um, and she felt if we were a part of everything, every sport, every dance, we played music, played piano, we played clarinet. Oh my God, we had no time to get in trouble, even though I found a way, find a way or make one. Um, <laughs> but my mother kept us very, very, very busy. And I um, quickly uh, held on to African dance classes and had wonderful, uh, again, in the community, grew up in uh, Hartford, Connecticut. And so it, that community was really um, a positive impact on who I am. I mean, you know, I saw myself in everything I did, everything I did. I saw, you know, black people running, uh, you know, businesses and at the uh, at the school that I went to. I saw black people in my in my uh, high schools. I saw my mom kept us uh, surrounded by that positive energy. Um, I seen laughter and joy within my aunts, my aunt Betty Ann, who had parties all the time because she just loved bringing the community together. Um, that really, really was an impact on me as well. So, I know I talk so much. I've done much. <laughs> I'll just be going that's, on. That's what we're doing here. We're talking. <laughs> I'm what like, shut me up, man. Shut me up. <laughs> what else do you have on your list? Said, oh, um, this ain't just your list, man. Uh, how did I find the work that I do? Was that one that you, yeah. you asked me that? How did I find the work that I do? Hmm. You work from home, right? Now, uh-huh. So um, I started off, um, okay, well, before here, I was the, uh, excuse me, an instructional technologist. Um, big word for I taught educators how to integrate technology into their classroom. So I did that in my last two jobs. Um, my last one, I was a, a trained uh, software for gamification. So of course, big in games. I've always been like a, a gamer. Um, and I think that all stemmed from that technology love I had. I mean, my mother had a VCR. I got my butt went from breaking it because I wanted to see. <laughs> I wanted to see what was it. Well, like what was going on? I seen this little turdy thing that was inside, you know. So I've always been, I guess, tech inclined. Um, and I went to school to be an educator and decided not to teach uh, because I didn't like the education system. Um, I thought it like was set up. Huh? What didn't you like? Ooh, we we are not. We're not gonna go there. <laughs> Why? Why not? Because <laughs> we don't have time to go there. Um, I I felt like it, it was it was a setup for failure, especially for our kids. That's that. I think that's the furthest I'm gonna go. <laughs> I I didn't think the system was built for us. Of course, it wasn't. You know, we already know that. You know, but there was no change after years and years. The education system is the same. It's the same brick and mortar. We took a, a time machine, you know, back to, I don't know, 1950, the classroom would look exactly the same. Um, really no growth, which led me into loving technology uh, because I seen the change um, in my kids when I uh, in integrated tech into my classroom. Um, but yeah, I graduated from Clark and I actually started working somewhere else because I didn't want to be a teacher. Uh, end up doing sales training at that job and was like, man, I really do love training. I'm good at, you know, 
uh, educating other people. Maybe I need to give this teacher a thing to try. And then I was in the education system for about 17 years from a technology teacher uh, to the instructional technologist, uh, to a tech trainer, to the director of academic technology at a private school here in Brookhaven, Georgia. Um, and again, the higher I climb, of course, less and less and less that's seen of me. Um, so I went back and forth into education and corporate, education and corporate. Um, I have, um, not to pat myself on the back, but I have a weird skill of being a tech person, um, but not talking techie. Does that make sense? Sure. Because we are we are assholes. <laughs> I'm sorry. Can you guys are like tech, tech people? Oh, we're, we're the worst. We're going to make you feel like pure, really, really, you don't know how to update your computer. You don't know how to update your computer. <laughs> So we're gonna go in. So when we talk jargon purposely, um, right. I, I, you know, I had a little mesh on there, which I think led me a little uh, higher up the ladder. Um, but recently, I was not happy at the job, the previous job I was um, at, and it was not the job; it was just the the continuous run, 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 run. Um, we worked days, we worked nights, we worked weekends. Um, there was really just, just a lot of, of giving my energy, um, a lot of my energy toward, uh, toward this job where I felt like it wasn't really going anywhere, if that makes sense. So I stopped, <laughs> so I quit. <laughs> so um, I so I've, gone, I've gone through different stages you know, of my thinking where like there's a part of me who wants to be a part of the change, right? Mm -hmm. And most people are more like, oh, it's too big. You know, it's been like that forever. You know, the powers that be are not trying to change it. But at the same time, I feel like we have to try. So I, I, on the podcast, one of the focus is understanding what, what's not going well and focusing our energy and talking about solutions and hopefully working towards solutions. And I do think that education is one of those things, you know, that we're churning out adults from the education system. And most of us had some significant amount of issues with the education we received. Mm -hmm. So I think your, your leg to stand on was this strong family, this strong network, this strong upbringing, you know, and a lot of people, you know, don't have that for different multiple reasons. Parents are working too much right? or, you know, all kinds of things, but this, the school system is supposed to fill in the gaps, right? You get some at home and some at school. So we're not getting enough at home for whatever reason. And then we're not getting enough in school. And it's not a teacher's fault because it's like the system's not supporting the teacher either. So it's one of these themes that keep kind of coming up. And I, I think, I feel like it always needs a little more time to address because it's like, you know, I live in a good, a good school district and there's still things that could be a lot better, you know, it just, like you said, the system is the same as it was 70 years ago. Right. You know, the same classroom, the same chalkboard, like, you know, reading out of a book kind of thing. And we have to really be intentional about that. And some people ask the question, is it that we don't know what to do or is it that they don't want to fix the problem? <laughs> You're going to make me go down there, aren't you? Well, first, I, I would like to point out there, as you said, it's not the teacher's fault. There are excellent educators out there, hundreds, millions, you know, of educators out there who are busting their butt every day. They are learning new skills by themselves in order to, to meet the needs of the kids or to meet, you know, meet them at their, or le or meet them at their level. Um, but like you said, what happens is, <clears throat> This is my opinion, but it, it's that burnout. It's that when you're not receiving support um, like you like you should, um, when you have thirty to forty kids in your class, you know you can't give each and every one of them your your um, 
you're, you know, they're that attention that they need. Um, when, a, when a student has been in the system so long that they're just continued push, 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 uh, then you're dealing with that. You may be dealing with uh, multicultural education where maybe you have students that don't speak English in the class. And as an educator, maybe you don't know that language either. So on and so forth. There are so many little, little things that um, become so overwhelming as, as an educator. And I think that may be one of our biggest issues is that we're losing great educators, especially after 2020. We're losing, we're losing them. We're losing them. Those kids, those teachers that care, those teachers that go home and work. I shouldn't even say this, but you know, they're working um, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. It's nine to five, my butt. <laughs> then they go home and they're doing more. Uh, you know, then they're doing stuff on the weekends. And then, you know, teachers are, are moms and dads and counselors and therapists and, you know, and homeboys and homegirls and friends, you know, they must be everything. And after a while, I feel like it's, it's, it's giving. You have to give a lot of your energy, um, not only to your babies in the classroom, whether they're kindergarten or whether it's you know higher ed they're still your 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 children you love them i have over 600 children um <laughs> you know just yesterday <laughs> so it's like after a while of just just continuously giving that energy out and not not receiving it sometimes from your from the higher levels from i'm not even talking about the admin in your school they could be doing great too but it goes higher and higher and higher um when something happens to the country, what's the first budget that goes down? Education, you know, <laughs> put yep. more money in here, take more money out. So it's always, it's, our country does not uh, consider education as a top priority. And until they do, um, or we, until we start doing our own and start, stop waiting for them to change it, why, why must we wait? Why don't we start our own schools and train our own children and things like that? But again, I'm not gonna go there. <laughs> why, are you, why are you staying away from the, the topic? <laughs> Man, because, because uh, I don't know, Nataki trained me well. I, <laughs> I'm gonna get on a, a little, um, my little high horse here and, and, and talk and start the revolution on your podcast. I don't, I don't That's know. what it's about. <laughs> so let me just tell you in case, since you don't want to say it, okay? Something's really wrong in my opinion and we have to do something revolutionary to fix it. Right. And my, my deepest fear is that a hundred years from now, we're still going to have these problems. You're still going to, we're still going to have these problems if we're waiting for someone else to change them for us. I am 100% behind the Black Lives Matter um, uh, progress. I love it. I have a sign out in my house. You know, I got shirts. I, got, I love it. Love it, love it. However, who gives a hell <laughs> if, they're, if they're not accepting us or if they're not looking at us as they, you know, as, as we want them to? You know, it, it, it's time that we start looking at ourselves like this. It's time where we start, you know, building our own communities, as you would say. Uh, within these communities. Hell, if you want to say it, we ought to just go back to Africa. <laughs> it, but it's, we, we can't, um, I'm glad we're pointing things out. I'm glad that people are aware uh, of all the, excuse my language, shit that has been happening to our people for years. I, I, I'm proud of that. So looking on that optimistic, yes. I'm like, people are aware I have a lot of people of all different diversities talking to me now about certain things were, which was like the elephant in the room. Well, don't talk about this or don't talk about that. Now it's just an, an, out, uh, an out loud conversation and I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. However, the conversation must start, yes. But after it starts, what are we waiting for? Are we waiting for them to do something? Or are we gonna do something on our own? So it's, 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 it's kind of a catch. It's, I love that uh, people are pointing out different businesses that are now um, giving to a black owned business, which I'm a recipient of one. So it, it's, it's awesome. 
where where are my black owned businesses that that can do that? Where are our black owned businesses in NASDAQ? You know, where are the black owned businesses that are, are multi million dollar companies that can also give back? We do it. We have such a network. I have several other uh, black owned businesses that I'm working with now, um, which is another part of Kidjoy, and it's lovely. But we, we, you know, we're just the little babies too. So we need to come up in the ranks so we can give back as well. Um, that same thing with education systems, you know, again, either coming up in those ranks and, and changing it or just making our own and not waiting for someone else to make that change. I feel like yeah. talking about I, 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 I've had enough conversations with enough people who are convinced that they're never gonna fix the problems. So if we feel that way, then why are we waiting along for it? And, and let's be honest, you know, Marcus Garvey was around in the, in the 20s and Marcus Garvey was saying these things in the 20s. So it, it, it's one, like, I think it's crazy because people don't even know about Marcus Garvey, right? So Marcus Garvey was saying these things in the 1920s and here we are in 2020 and we're still talking about the same thing. So he, he was talking about us putting our money together, having our own schools and not wait for someone else to fix our schools, start to fund the inner city and these kinds of things, right? The inner city, the ghettos were always there. You know, other groups worked together, pulled themselves together and moved out of the inner city. And we're still there a hundred years later. Right, right. And of course, and, and again, I don't want to take away from from the steps we have taken too. You don't necessarily want to focus on the goals so hard that you forget about the progress. We do have like the Black Wall Street. We do have uh, communities here, right here in Atlanta, communities um, that are, you know, huge, gorgeous mansions in Atlanta. Give, give them a awesome. shout out. Huh? Give them a shout out. Which community is this? I, I'm not going to name one and not name all. Like there's, I mean, there's so, I mean, there's businesses doing some serious things that we, uh, really, we got new cats on the scene. Uh, what is it? Uh, the gathering spot uh, that are a giving back to the community, having their own um, funding here. We have our own entrepreneurship programs down here. Um, oh, these are just the ones I've been to recently. You're going to kill me because there's, there's people out there that's going to be like, really, you didn't name this? Uh, what is it? The, the Russell Center of Innovation and Entrepreneurship, I think. Um, there is, um, oh, there's, um, oh, I'm going to name the owner of it, Jay Carter, but I can't even remember the name. So you better give me a trouble, man. <laughs> they're, what they're just funding to their angel funders out there, strictly black owned angel funders that are giving straight only to uh, people of color. There are black owned banks um, that not just only the people of color, but they're focused. So we are. So definitely give props to the people that are, are, are doing it. So King Kinshasa, here's the deal, right? Like I said, there's, there's, I think, an elephant in the room and, and we're addressing it. Um, and in the end, the goal is for, I think we have to get serious and prioritize the change and not wait. And that's a part of the thing, you know, we have the Obamas of the world and we get excited. And then we say, well, what did Obama do for the black people? You know, we're still asking those questions. And the reality is no one in political office is going to fix our problems, I think. I agree. Why are we, uh, Obama was great, very handsome. <laughs> the man had swag. I mean, watch out, Michelle. But why are we waiting for him? Why are we downing him or, or not downing him? Why are we waiting for him to do the same thing? Yay, we had a black president. Great, awesome. That was what, four, five years ago? Like, we, we can't always rely on other people. I say that to you as well. You can't always rely on everyone else to make their own business and push. What are you doing to help with the Black community as well? You know, and, and allow people to do what they must. Not everyone is going to, you know, be Matt Turner, okay? Like, not 
not everyone is going to be like, you know, busting up the, the place, okay? We, we, we can't expect that from everyone. We, I would love it, but you can't expect that. So allow people to make their change or, or, you know, throw a pebble in the lake while others are still okay throwing, you know, rocks and boulders in a lake. All of those make changes, all of those. Simply sharing videos. I, I, I have a, a homeboy who uh, all he does is post memes on not, I mean, he has a full-time job, but he's always posted memes. In my head, I'm like, man, this dude ain't doing nothing. But all those memes are like, they make you think. They're, they're, they're like, oh, okay, they're pointing. I learned some stuff from this. Stuff. So it's, you may not think he's doing anything to, you know, change the world, but that's that conversation too. That meme that made me laugh is also going to make me think about our community. So also see people are at where they, at where they are in their life. And hopefully, you know, everyone will start going towards this, this, this change or, or this becoming a better person. And again, that's what Kinjoy is all about. It's a mind shift. If you don't see a need for change, then you're not going to want to change. So if you're comfortable, you're, you know, you're chilling and you're making, I made great money at my last job, very good money. Okay. And I decided to leave because it, it just wasn't in alignment of who I am now. And a lot of people, I'm reading a lot of articles on people who are leaving these, these you know, corporate careers, which we thought that's where we want it to be for years. Mm -hmm. you know, we're trained to do this. You know, that's the next thing you do, do this, do this, do this. And I have never been so happier in my life, not in, 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 in that, you know, that main street corporate life. I'm still working my butt off, I'm working more. <laughs> I'm working more now than I was. And not getting paid, <laughs> but it's it's um it's it's a feeling. It's it's I'll call it it's it's, it's dopamine. You know, I I I get excited learning something new or seeing something that I built come alive. Um, helping people or seeing the smiles that that's my high. You know, when I get a text from you <laughs> the day after my event, just saying, oh my God, I met so many great people at that last event, so on and so forth. Those are the things, that's like my 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 reward, my cash reward. So um, I don't even know how we got on this. I think I went on a couple of teams. Listen, but listen, <laughs> listen, this is, you're telling it like it is, which is what, what it's about. Right. And, and the idea is to throw the ideas out there, Right. Work, work on solutions right. and start to do the work. You know, we have to have the conversations and begin doing the work and continue doing the work. Um, I want you to be a part of the conversation and stay keeping us updated with your progress and the movement that you have going down there in Atlanta. I and will. You should have a panel. That should be your next like a little panel discussion. I'm, I'm going there. I'm going nice. there. Nice. I, didn't, I don't want to skip over the, the introduction. Okay. <laughs> so, my bad, my bad. yeah, no, there's a lot of people doing a lot of things. You know, sometimes when I speak, I can say, we need to start. And, and there's a lot of people who's already doing a lot of things. So right. I, I'm aware of that. And a part of what I do is I want to, when I see things, I want to acknowledge it, give it a platform, and you know maybe throw some fuel on that fire so to help it grow good good and what you're doing is great just bring in having the conversation bring in the knowledge to it you know putting it like you said the elephant in a room and taking it out of the room and putting it outside <laughs> so everyone can see it yeah so i want you to you still have your notes and i want you to continue to think about it you kind of have a feel for where we're going All right and, you know, in my mind, if we had a hundred, hundred people like you in every state, you know, and we were all communicating with each other, funding each other things, supporting each other's things, like we could build a real network. Right. You know? And I think social media is a real tool and we have to be open and use it as, as a tool and we can really get somewhere. You right. know? We have to embrace each other's weaknesses and not close the door when, when things don't look the way we want it to look. Right. 
So I'm all about it. You know, I want to see progress just like you want to see progress. I want to see people smile, you know, and I want us to be looking back and say, look how far we've come. Right. You know, look, these kids are getting something we didn't get. You know, look, we built this school and now we don't have the, they don't have the problems we had, you know, right. we're supporting families, those kinds of things. Right. So yeah, it has, we have to have the conversation and I've, I've had so many of these conversations offline and I walked away with a burning desire and I felt the, so I'm like, I need to capture this. I need right. to kind of, you know, this is a part of it so that we can kind of promote the conversation. Agreed. Agreed. And I love that. I love that energy. I love that. So let's continue and um, I'll be reaching out and we'll do more things. I am here. I yeah. am here. We connected as soon as we met. So, you know, yeah. I'm right here. So I know November 9th, you have your Wu-Tang trivia. Wu-Tang. Everybody's like, what does that, that got to do with Kid Joy, man? <laughs> I tell you what, are, are you going to stream it? Joy. Say it again. Are you going to stream it? Um, uh, There's going to be live parts, but the whole thing is not going to be streamed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do Just, you know, share what you can. Yeah, of course. Of course. All right. Um, um, King Sha. No, I don't. Don't help me. King King Sha. King King Sha. Ya. Sha. <laughs> Look. Uh, do you see my name on? It is there. It okay. is there. King Sha. Sa. There you go. Sha. Sa. King Sha. There you go. What country did it come from? Kinshasa is the capital of Zaire. Okay. Uh, well, it's Democratic Republic of the Congo now, but I still say Zaire. Yeah, power to the people. You know it. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. And um, tell us where we can find you one more time. Right. So find Kinjoy, K I N J O Y, KinjoyEvents.com. From there, you can get to any one of our social media or Kinjoy Events on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, on LinkedIn. Um, and, and look out for us, man. We're starting out, like I said, starting out small with some events, but uh, we, we plan to be huge. I mean, we're going to be that multi-million dollar uh, company that other people are gonna be talking about in a couple of years. Trust and believe. And we can plan something for you to come up to New York or Philly or Princeton. Ah, born and raised in Connecticut. My whole family's still up in Connecticut, so I'm, I'm going to be there in November. So you just let me know. All right, let's do it. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Take care.